Hi, I'm Sean Guasamaki. Welcome in to the FanDuel. Hurry up. I'm joined now by Jim Sanis from FanDuel. And Jim, tough life these golfers live going from Pebble Beach to now the Riviera Golf Course playing the Genesis Invitational. Jim, you like Rory McIlroy this week. He's now the number one ranked golfer in all the land, taking that over from Brooks Kepka. Tell us about Rory McIlroy and his play for this week at the Riviera Golf Course. Yeah, you were talking about how tough of a life it is, and it actually is just because <laughs> this field is brutal. Like, it's it's a great venue to play, but there are so many top golfers in this field. But when I look at this field, it still feels like Rory McIlroy stands out. He's actually the betting favorite by a decent amount. He is plus 750. No one else is shorter than 10 to 1. So the sports books seem to think that Rory is the top guy, and the stats back that up, and the, the finishes back that up too, because Rory enters this weekend with four straight top four finishes. If we look at him since he missed the cut at the Open, Rory has nine top 10s in 11 events. He has seven top fives. He has a pair of wins. He is fourth in driving distance the past 50 rounds, according to Fantasy National. National. He is 10th in approach. He is 9th around the green the past 50 rounds. So even though this is a really loaded field and it's a really difficult field, I still think Rory McIlroy is kind of like a half or a quarter of a tier above the rest of this field. And I want to treat him as such in DFS. He has $12,200. It is a definitely a hefty salary, but Rory is worth every penny with how well he is golfing right now. I mentioned Rory McIlroy, the world's number one golfer. First time since September 2015, he's ranked number one in the world. All right, let's move on to Patrick Cantlay. Uh, he's also on your list as ones to watch this week. Why, Patrick? Yeah, I think when you're looking at this field, there's a lot of value in going with one stud like Rory, like Dustin Johnson, uh, like John Rahm, and then dropping down for your second stud. And for me, Patrick Cantlay really does stand out as being one of those second stud guys in that second tier. I think Tony Finau is in that same range. Xander Schauffele, a lot of really good guys here. But for Patrick Cantlay, the stats are pretty solid and uh, he's also done well at this course in the past. So good course knowledge, I think, is valuable. I don't need them to be great at this course, but Cantlay has been. He was 15th here last year. He was fourth in 2018. And in those two events, never shot around above par. And the stats are good, too. Ranked 16th in this field in distance the past 50 rounds. He is eighth in approach. He is 10th around the green. Now, the putting splits on POA, just kind of okay for Patrick Cantlay. And it is his worst putting surface, but... It, he goes a long way towards having a top-heavy lineup that still has two studs in it. So I think Cantlay's appealing again. I think that Tony Finau is really good, as is Andrew Schauffele, Adam Scott, if you want to go a little bit cheaper. But as far as the second tier goes, I think Patrick Cantlay is my favorite guy. He's $11,400 and should be in a good position to put up a good number uh, Thursday through Sunday. Patrick Cantlay finished tied for 11th at Pebble Beach, just outside the top 10 last week. All right, let's move on to... Joaquin Neiman, uh, he hasn't played since the Farmers Insurance Open. That was last month. He was tied for 44th. Why Joaquin this week here for the Genesis Invitational? Yeah, there's definitely some risk here in Joaquin Neiman because he's proven himself to be a better putter on bent grass recently. He's definitely made some gains. That was kind of what held Joaquin Neiman back previously was putting. And on bent grass, he's been a lot better. On Poa, he's still a little bit unproven, so we could see a return here for bad Neiman, but the ball striking numbers are still phenomenal, especially for a guy who was down this year at $9,400. He ranks 23rd in this field in distance and 18th in approach the past 50 rounds, and plenty of those rounds have come against tougher level competition, and he we have seen at least Neiman on these greens before because he was at the Genesis last year, and he did make the cut, finished 44th, and that event came before Neiman really started to figure things out and put everything together as a golfer. So finishing 44th, really not that bad, I wouldn't say, for Joaquin Neiman. And once you get below like $10,000, the drop-off from a distance perspective is pretty big. But Joaquin Neiman brings you that distance. He is $9,400, has a good approach play as well. So I know there is some risk in Joaquin Neiman, given that the putting hasn't necessarily been there on POA just yet. But I don't think it should be catastrophic anymore for him because he's improved enough overall to hopefully avoid those major downsides. And the salary helps account for his imperfections too. So $9,400 for Joaquin Neiman, to me, I think makes a lot of sense. Jim, you just mentioned it, $9,400 for Neiman. You have Scotty Scheffler at $9,200. He hasn't played in a couple of weeks since the Phoenix Open. How about Scheffler's game? What do you like about Scheffler's game this week there at the Genesis Invitational? 
Yeah, I would put Scotty Scheffler in a pretty similar bucket to Joaquin Neiman, where there is definitely some risk because among the things Scheffler has done well since coming up to the PGA Tour, short game has not been one of those things. So there's definitely some missed cut risk with Scotty Scheffler. But just like Joaquin Neiman, the ball striking here is really good. 22nd in distance the past 50 rounds. He is 20th in approach, and he helped use those numbers to finish third at the American Express. And that was less than a month ago still. You can get this guy now for $9,200. That shows you how good this field is. A guy who was among the most expensive golfers in the field not that long ago is now $9,200. It does make sense, again, because he's a bit less proven. It's a really tough field. The short game is not quite that good. So I think that there is there is a reason why Scheffler is as cheap as he is at $9,200. But He's played this course before. He actually qualified here when he was still in college back in 2018. Shot a 73 to 76, so didn't embarrass himself despite being still a collegiate golfer at that time. And I think that that course knowledge for Scheffler is valuable, at least having been here once in the past. So he's kind of like Neiman, and I'd prefer not to have both Neiman and Scheffler in the same lineup just because I think the odds that one of them winds up missing the cut are pretty high. But I think they both make sense individually and in a vacuum. So I like Joaquin Neiman for the exact same reasons I like Scotty Scheffler. Scheffler, great ball striker, a little bit of risk, but some some savings definitely to help account for that. So I do think Scheffler makes a lot of sense here at $9,200. You also like a South African golfer, Eric Van Royen, at $8,800 this week. Um, he missed the cut at the Saudi International Tournament there on the European Tour last month. What do you like about uh, Eric Van Royen at $8,800 this week? Yeah, looking at Van Royen over on the Euro Tour, the numbers are just kind of okay. You alluded to that miscut at the Saudi International. That was a pretty tough event, but overall, he's just been kind of middling. But the thing about Van Royen is that even though the results haven't blown you away, he's been pretty consistent. You know, Van Royen really kind of got on our map uh, in the majors last year. He was good at the U.S. Open initially, then finished 20th at the Open Championship. And since then, he has four top 10s and 15 events. Uh, that does include a win. Outside of the, you know, missing three cuts, which he has done in those 15 events, he has been the top 40 in each event. So, you know, missing some cuts and not a lot of top end finishes, but he does have a win and overall has been pretty good. The approach play on the Euro Tour, the, the stats there for Van Royen, they're not that great. Uh, so I don't view him as being some massive value play, but he's got some upside. He's $8,800. I can take that for sure. As he comes back here to the PGA Tour on the U.S. side, I wouldn't expect him to be very popular just because Van Royen is not a regular on the PGA Tour. So I think that helps out a lot as well if you're looking at this from an ownership perspective. You could go to Jason Kokrak, a favorite here on the Hurry Up, $8,900. I am very okay with him. But Van Royen coming back here to the PGA Tour, doing well enough internationally for me to have some confidence in him, in him at $8,800. And lastly, Jim, you have Carlos Ortiz at $8,400 this week. The Mexican golfer finished tied for 25th at the Phoenix Open a couple of weeks ago. What do you like about Ortiz this week at Pebble Beach? Yeah, I think the biggest appeal of Carlos Ortiz is that his, his profile is pretty balanced for a guy who is $8,400. He ranks 15th in distance. He is 55th in approach and 16th around the green. Those are the three key stats I'm looking at for this weekend. He's also not a bad putter on POA. It's just a 51-round sample for him on POA, but those 51 rounds have been pretty good, so there's no real big negatives in Carlos Ortiz's game. And what that does is lower the odds that he implodes. And when you can get a guy who has decent odds to make the cut for his $8,400 it's really hard to turn that down. He also does know this course. He was here last year, finished ninth in that event, and Ortiz was a pretty major stud during the swing season. He made th He's made three of his four cuts to start 2020, so Carlos Ortiz, to me, checks pretty much every box. He's my favorite guy below $9,000, and I think he makes it a lot easier to get in guys like Rory McIlroy, like Patrick Cantlay, like Tony Fina, whoever fits your fancy most up there. Using using Carlos Ortiz in one of your slots makes that a lot easier. So I can see myself building around a lot of Carlos Ortiz this weekend, just hoping he makes a cut because he gives you a lot of upside elsewhere. And he has a lot of upside himself, given how well he golfs and how balanced his profile is. It's always a lot of fun, Jim, when the PGA Tour returns to the Riviera Golf course and this time it's for the genesis open excellent information jim sonis fan duel thanks for the time i appreciate it guys thank you very much and good luck with your dfs lineups this weekend there he is jim sonis don't go anywhere up next davis maddock
from DailyRoto.com will join us to give his list of top players to look at for this week's Genesis Open. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Sean Guasamaki, joined now by Davis Maddock of DailyRoto.com. Davis, welcome in. Pleasure to have you on, and we're talking Genesis Open at beautiful Riviera Golf Course there in Southern California. First player on the board I see that you listed, Rory McIlroy, the betting favorite in this event. Obviously, world's new number one. What is it about Rory's game that's going so well right now and the reason why you like him in this event? I mean, the the fact is, Rory McIlroy is he's just better than everyone else. Rory hits the ball further. He hits it more accurately. And if Rory has not even a, a great week, but just a good week with his wedges and a good week with his putter, there really is not anyone on the PGA Tour that can contend with him. You know, his best game is better than Brooks's. Maybe Dustin Johnson's best game can come close, but DJ is nowhere close to his best right now. You know, we saw him have one of his worst rounds on the PGA Tour last Sunday at Pebble Beach. So uh, Roy McIlroy at seven and a half to one. I actually think that uh, the fair price on him is probably a little bit closer to six to one. So we definitely like Rory this week. Next up, Adam Scott, 28 to one top five in strokes gained uh, striking the ball over the last year. What is it about Adam Scott's game that you like for this car course? So this course is, uh, you know, there's not going to, you're not going to find a ton of trouble and it's just going to be, you know, about uh, gaining strokes off the tee and then gaining strokes with your long irons, which is pretty much Adam Scott's game. You know, if you ever have seen him on the broadcast, he pretty much has the most beautiful swing in all of golf and has a, a good record at this course as well. So, uh, you know, and, and he also is in good form right now. So he's kind of down there at 28 to one, 30 to one, something like that. And, uh, you know, those are just very fair numbers for someone with his style of golf. All right, Adam Scott there uh, for your second play. Your third play, you like Bubba Watson, listed as a 25-to-1 betting favorite. He's had multiple wins at this golf course, the Riviera Golf Course, in the past. What is it about Bubba that you like this week? So those who have followed golf for a while know you you play Bubba at courses that he really likes and you really avoid him at courses that he does not like. And Riviera is just one of his happy places. Now, you could say definitely it's, it's a course fit for him because so much of the results at this course are going to be about gaining strokes off the tee. Bubba is one of the best on tour at that. But also there's probably just something about this course that, you know, suits his game in terms of shot shape and, uh, you know, some of those other small variables that are a little bit harder to uh, to dial in with the data. So, you know, Bubba at one of his happy places. We love him, even if the data modeling does not love him as much. You like a, a long shot here next up, Jason Kokrak at 100 to 1. What is it about Kokrak that you think maybe will be a good play this week, having him listed as a 100 to 1 shot to win this tournament? So Kokrak is, he's just one of our favorites over at dailyroto.com with our projections that are uh, generated by data golf. And, and really he just has kind of a, the Aldi version, right? The, the off brand version of really good golf. He gains strokes off the tee, gains strokes with his long irons and his, you know, his best run of results over the last two seasons on the PGA tour have definitely been driven a little bit by some hot putting, but he always kind of had the game that suggested that better results were on the horizon. And uh, now, that he's no longer priced like a market leader you know there were events last year where he was priced at 33 to 1 so now that we can buy him at you know 100 to 1 and and deep prices like that it's just a really good price play at this course another long shot you have listed carlos ortiz he's the next guy up on your list 120 to 1 what is it about the mexican golfer carlos ortiz that you like for this week as a long shot Ortiz is, again, you know, one of the guys on tour who hits the ball, you know, just an absolute mile, not as skilled around the greens, but we just have seen that that does not matter as much at Riviera. It's more about gaining strokes off the tee, gaining strokes uh, approaching the green to areas where Carlos Ortiz is better than tour average at. And, uh, you know, at courses like this that have served up some long shot winners, you know, and we just see, we see this a lot on the California events. We just want to bet a bunch of guys deeper down the card, and Ortiz is one of my favorites this week all right next up and your last golfer here bryson dechambeau the 26 year old you have listed right now uh on your list here and he finished tied for 52nd place the last time he was on on the course that was at the phoenix open a few weeks ago he's now back in action for the uh, riviera golf course for the genesis open what about bryson dechambeau what is it about his game that you like this week 
So people don't like Bryson DeChambeau, and that influences his numbers at golf tournaments. Right now, he is the official world golf ranking number 18 overall. In my personal rankings, he's probably closer to 12, 13, 14. Like, I I think Bryson is a lot better than the market thinks Bryson is. And, And when Bryson has his game going, you know, he plays immaculate rounds of golf. And, you know, if, if I'm going to hold that opinion that Bryson is better than the market thinks he is, I need to be betting him outright at these prices because, you know, I, I think that he is better than, for example, you know, Hideki Matsuyama, who's listed at 28 to one. And he's better than a lot of these other guys who are, are priced ahead of him. So not so much about course fit as just thinking he is mispriced this week. Davis Maddock, DailyRoto.com. Thanks for the time. We'll be checking in on your plays for this week at the Genesis Open at the Riviera Golf Course. Thanks for the time, Davis. Thanks, guys, for having me. That is the FanDuel. Hurry up for this week. Best of luck to everyone out there. I am Sean Guasamaki. See you next time.